uh, thank you to uh, everyone who's joined. Uh, we'll just give it maybe another minute for folks who are uh, still about to join. So uh, to uh, come join us and we can get started. So uh, uh, one more minute, let's try this and then we can begin. Sure, Sam. Okay, I think it is going to a uh, couple of minutes past. So, good to begin, Dennis. Uh, yes, sir. Good to go. So, first of all, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who is being on this call on your busy schedule day. My colleague Sam, who is a subject matter expert and the director of security analytics for Sitka, will take you and walk through on how to manage security threats through uh, awareness training and phishing simulation. So, Sam, the session is over to you, please. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, uh, is my voice audible, please? Uh, yes, yeah, Sam. Uh, yeah. Your, uh, yeah, your vocal is fine, and I can see your screen. You're, you're okay. good. Uh, so, uh, again, like Dennis said, thank you everyone for uh, uh, choosing to spend uh, the next 30, 40 minutes uh, with me on this uh, Friday evening. I know everyone's very busy, looking forward. Uh, to the end of the week, uh, uh, but but thank you to so thank you for choosing to spend that time with us on this session today. Uh, hope you're all safe, of course. Uh, that's the number one priority for all of us, uh, given the whole situation. Uh, uh, just to give a very brief introduction of myself uh, as we begin. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, uh, I'll the uh, want to use non participant uh, Dennis? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, you might want to mute non participant some there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I run the security practice for Fujitsa. Uh, we actually do a lot of things uh, in case any of you have attended our previous webinars. Uh, we do things on the security monitoring side uh, or the detection side, uh, SIEM, SOAR, we do data security, uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, but today's uh, focus is uh, more on security awareness training and phishing simulation as a topic. Uh, I'll go through it uh, in quite a bit of detail. Uh, uh, most of you might have, of course, already gone through the uh, agenda that was shared earlier. So we want to talk about uh, what is the risk that we're trying to prevent, uh, outside of the risk, there will typically be some compliance and regulatory aspects also, uh, which is one of the reasons that we uh, do security awareness and uh, security awareness training. Uh, we want to know uh, after understanding the risk uh, and the compliance and regulatory requirements about how the security awareness actually helps. Uh, and there's a little bit of talking about uh, the different kind of phishing attacks and also how phishing simulation can actually help. Uh, the team uh, and all employees in the organization to uh, manage their overall behavior. Uh, we wind it up with uh, something, a uh, little bit of information on the metrics and reporting part of it, because without metrics and report, uh, reporting, it's, uh, any program is always going to be limited in efficacy. And then uh, there's a small uh, demo also I'll run through to, to, to illustrate some of the concepts that uh, we will be talking about today. So, so that's enough for today. And uh, during the course of the session, uh, I will be pausing for questions in between. Feel free to uh, type in your questions, uh, questions in the chat uh, box if you want to unmute and ask questions. I think that's also uh, perfectly uh, good. So, uh, with that, without further ado, let me begin. So, the first question um, most of you are joining us here, so I'm sure you all have a point of view. So, what is the risk? Uh, if you look at this graphic on this page, uh, starting uh, since uh, uh, almost two decades ago, ago, 98, all the way to the present, what you will uh, notice is that there has been a dramatic spike in the number of uh, malicious actors, the number of malicious programs, the number of uh, threats that are being seen uh, in the environment. So as a result of this, 
increase in the threat surface and the uh, uh, threat vectors, we are also seeing an increase in the number of uh, breaches, the number of incidents that are actually happening. And uh, this is all over the place. Right? Uh, you used to have uh, denial of service attacks, uh, but now it's your focus more on malware, ransomware has made a big comeback. Uh, you have got cloud based attacks that are more prevalent. So, all of this is uh, something that is uh, uh, just increasing, and there is no signs of this uh, uh, going down over time. Uh, some of the attack vectors uh, that are utilized by these various actors, by some of these various uh, uh, tools that you see uh, out there in the wild, is uh, things like software vulnerabilities, uh, untouched software that is being uh, uh, compromised, and then someone getting access to your system. Uh, you have actual uh, compromise of credentials themselves. Uh, one of the reasons could go for that being deep password. You have insider threats where you have disgruntled employees, ex employees trying to uh, steal uh, uh, organization secrets. Uh, uh, they could be poor encryption because of if your uh, uh, communication is being uh, intercepted and then someone might be uh, looking at uh, things they shouldn't be looking at. Ransomware, very, very prevalent now. One of the big uh, uh, reasons for breaches uh, and incidents in the industry right now. Uh, phishing, about which we'll be talking about, uh, misconfigurations. Then uh, the, the part that, so when you talk about trust relationships, essentially it's uh, uh, malicious actors posing as someone that you uh, trust. It could be a vendor, it could be someone uh, in your family. They, they essentially try to uh, act as if they are someone that you know and trust, and based on that, they try to get access to your system, to your uh, data, and of course, the denial of service. So, so but these are some of the common attack vectors that are used, and we also saw that, of course, there's an ever increasing number of threats. Now, in answer to that, uh, if we look at this slide, this is really interesting. Uh, you have uh, your routine number of uh, tools, system solutions to try and prevent uh, attackers from getting in. Uh, this ranges uh, from all over, uh, it's ranging from encryption to you could have uh, data loss prevention uh, uh, solutions. You could have uh, file integrity monitoring systems. You could have uh, uh, SIEM tools. Uh, you could have volunteer management. You could have uh, uh, IT, and, IT and access management uh, tools. You could use privileged access management tools. So I don't mean, the, the space is vast. You have, in network security, you have firewall. Uh, in network security, you might have endpoint protection suite. So, so there is a lot of system solutions out there at any large organization, even any mid sized organization. Uh, they will typically uh, be wanting to install one or more of these solutions to try and protect uh, themselves, to reduce the attack surface, to protect and to detect and to respond. So there are all these things that are happening. Uh, but despite all of those systems and all of those solutions that we are seeing out there, uh, you, you read the news. Everyone uh, is seeing that incidents are happening, right? And uh, there is this uh, very interesting uh, site out there. Uh, I'm sure this uh, document will be shared with you after the call also. I would suggest that you can take a look at this also. Uh, if you look at the kind of incidents you're talking about, uh, this is really beautifully visualized on this website. So the site, so if you look at uh, the early 2000s, for example, I mean, not many features uh, or not many names here. But consistently over time, even though you have so many complex solutions that you are putting in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, you, have, you have got names like Experian, you have got Facebook, you have got Microsoft, uh, you have got uh, uh, Canva, uh, I mean, Quora, Twitter, all these are big names. So these are not any uh, Tom, Nick, or Harry shop uh, where you don't have enough security controls. Where you don't have uh, solutions in place, you don't have systems in place to protect yourself. These are some of the biggest names in the business and they're still getting hacked despite having so many system solutions, resources, people at their disposal. So why is that happening? Uh, that's something uh, that may be worth pondering about. So with that uh, uh, in mind, uh, I think this saying is something that might uh, resonate as to why we might be seeing what we are seeing. From the previous link. So a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So no matter how much you secure your environment, no matter how many processes or policies or systems or tools you have in place, uh, there will always be something that uh, can be exploited. 
And in this case, I wanted to make that point with the help of Gilbert. Uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of Gilbert. Gilbert might go to cartoon uh, to to keep sort of engaged uh, in any situation. And uh, surprisingly, even in uh, fishing and security awareness, uh, Gilbert comes to the rescue. Right. So so if you look at buy, for example, fishing scams keep working. So someone you get an email uh, to enter your bank account number. One of the employee 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 might say, "Hey, this is a scam. I'm not going to keep or something." Uh, it goes to another employee in your organization, and uh, they want to say, "Yep, it's a scam. I'm not going to keep or anything." But there'll always be that one person. Uh, this is the pointy head boss character from Gilbert, uh, one of my favorites. But there'll always be that one or more character who's going to say, "Hey, okay, I got this mail. Looks interesting. Why don't I just uh, type it?" Right? So. This is where the problem happens. Uh, no matter how many systems, solutions, processes, how many technology, technological innovations are put in place, there's always uh, a, a weak link, and typically it uh, ends up being a human element. There's someone in that, uh, so there's someone in your team, there's someone in your organization who might not follow all the tools, technologies, processes that you've put in, and that might break down your entire uh, uh, security uh, landscape as a result. Now, if I go back to again the uh, attack vectors that I've spoken about earlier, uh, now if I look at uh, Mr. Pointy Head boss now coming into the picture and uh, applying uh, uh, this overlay on the picture, what you'll notice is that if you look at things like compromised credentials, weak passwords, uh, ransomware, uh, phishing, and trust relationships, right? all of these are essentially uh, vectors that depend on your team being compromised. So someone clicks on a, a, a mail without suspecting that it could be a phishing email. Someone has a very poor password that has been uh, cracked pretty easily. Someone maybe just ends up sending data out to someone they believe is a trusted vendor or a family friend. And in a in reality, it could be a phishing attack. So uh, the human element uh, in a lot of organizations is the reason that you end up having some kind of a breach in the first place. So there's also some statistics here. Uh, for example, that talk about phishing in particular. So, if you talk about phishing, 91% uh, of cyber crime starts with uh, email. Uh, the average cost uh, for a US company, uh, with, uh, the average cost of phishing attack for a, for a US com uh, company is about $8 million. Uh, most uh, data breaches were caused by human detectors. Right? So, all of this again to a large extent it highlights uh, the fact that the human element is important. And that is the risk uh, of everyone uh, uh, on today's call. Uh, the, when we talk about what is the risk, the risk is that there is a human element involved, which is actively being exploited by cyber criminals. And that is what we want to protect against. So, if we talk about security awareness, if we talk about phishing simulation, uh, which is the subject of today's seminar uh, or webinar, uh, the reason we are doing that is exactly because of this human element. So, so with that, I'll just pause for a minute here uh, for a very quick poll. It, it's just a, a two-question uh, poll uh, to understand in your organizations, uh, is there anything in place around security awareness or uh, phishing simulation? So uh, if we could take about, say, 30 seconds to answer this very quickly and, and see the results, I think that will be very interesting. Uh, in case there are any questions that anyone has, please do uh, pose that also. So, yeah, uh, so, so Dennis, if you can kind of close this out in about uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, poll is live now, Sam. Okay, wonderful. Okay, sixty-one percent have participated so far. Looks like if uh, I could encourage everyone else to sort of take a couple of seconds to just put in your choices. Okay, uh, can we uh, close this uh, poll now? Uh, I think about 85 persons have participated. There are just a few who haven't. Sure. Okay. Great. So, uh, I can you see the results of the poll now? Uh, I just shared the results. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Pastor. So, uh, if I look at the results that we have, uh, so uh, uh, 
do you have security on this same program? I, mean, I think uh, interestingly, uh, quite a lot of people uh, said that yes, it is done either theoretically or on an ongoing basis. Uh, about 20% said it's not done at the moment. Uh, and then again, when we talk about uh, a fishing simulation, uh, looks like 33% said no, uh, while uh, for about 66% uh, it is being done either theoretically or, or not or, or on an ongoing basis. So, so that's interesting to know. Uh, it's good to see that in your organization is slowly being done. That. And to some extent, I suspect the compliance and regulations uh, part of it will, will be one of the driver for why it's being done. Uh, any questions so far from anyone uh, before uh, I move on to the next section? Do we have any questions? Okay. Uh, uh, do I send out a uh, question? Won't spam filters pick up all fishing emails? What uh, is the risk of that? That's okay. I think that's a good question. Right? So, uh, if you have deployed a spam filter, if you have got mail gateways, then those should be picking up uh, uh, fishing emails. So, I mean, uh, your question is uh, why is that even a risk? The, the short answer to that is that uh, even if you have uh, uh, the best tools in the market, if you have got Minecraft involved, you have got Post 365. Uh, you've got uh, uh, some advanced uh, uh, deep detection and uh, protection systems involved. There are always going to be emails that get through. This could happen, for example, for uh, there, there could be many reasons that this happens. One example could be that you might have a wonderful tool like say Minecraft, but maybe it's not being configured properly. So because of that, uh, something is coming through. Uh, uh, so uh, so spooky, uh, spooking attempts are uh, successful and you're getting uh, uh, Another uh, scenario could be uh, Maybe for the organization, an email server has been hijacked. And then, uh, because the organization doesn't know that the email server has been hijacked, uh, malicious actors are using a valid email server to send out emails to other people. So, it, it, so others don't realize that they're getting it from a malicious source. Or you could even have uh, account uh, hacking, right? So, someone could hack into my email, uh, get my email uh, details, and use my email places. They could uh, mail it out to my friends, and they might not suspect that it's not me if they do it well enough. So there are many uh, reasons uh, why, despite having those controls in place, fishing is still a problem. Uh, we still have so much of ransomware, ransomware and malware uh, that's affecting our system, uh, despite having all of these uh, controls in place. Uh, uh, does that answer your question? Uh, uh, okay, there's no response. I'm assuming that. Okay. Uh, I'll move on to the compliance and regulatory aspects of it also uh, very quickly because uh, most organizations to a large extent they are driven by uh, many different, uh, by the need to comply with many different uh, regulations or uh, uh, compliance criteria. For example, if you look at PCI DSS, uh, which is more for the payment card industry, uh, it is uh, required uh, to have security awareness as part of uh, organization uh, uh, practices and policies. If you look at uh, HIPAA, for example, which is a very common uh, act in the uh, health insurance industry, the US health insurance industry, again, there is a need for having security awareness. Uh, uh, if you talk about your ISO, so if you have your ISO or K1, K2, uh, there's a part around the awareness training uh, on the job. Uh, there's uh, the US benchmark where all federal agencies in the US they need to uh, have. Uh, awareness training in place uh, in order to be uh, able to comply to uh, the regulation. And uh, if you look at as I mean, uh, this is just a uh, US specific, uh, specific words. Uh, specific words. If you look at even something called the NERS, the North American uh, uh, Energy Research uh, uh, Committee. So uh, the, the NERS CIT uh, asked for the security of the DLB. So uh, if you look closer home to India, so if you look at the RBI cyber security framework. Uh, if you look at the framework for banks, for union cooperative banks, again, there's a need, there's a, there's a criteria that says that there should be security evidence that's going on. Uh, in Singapore, uh, you've got the Monetary Authority of Singapore uh, uh, Technology Risk Management Guidelines, you've got the uh, Critical uh, Information Infrastructure Provider uh, Guidelines in Singapore, again, KIC, CICOP. So, uh, anywhere you go, Hong Kong, Singapore, or, uh, Australia, Wherever you have a cyber security guideline, there's more and more of focus on making sure that there's some elements of security awareness that's, that's built into the uh, training program. 
So uh, I'll move to the next part, uh, I guess, uh, which is more about uh, how does security awareness training help in the first place. Uh, so uh, this uh, is answered to, to some extent by NISC. So NISC, of course, as uh, many of you might know, is one of the leading standards organizations globally. So they published many papers uh, talking in detail about the best practices, the best standards uh, to be adopted by uh, organizations globally. Uh, in different areas. So there is a uh, there's a special subject in the eight minute, eight minute batch 50 that talks a little bit in more detail about what kind of security awareness training you should have. And uh, uh, what they talk about is they talk about uh, phishing, which should be covered. Uh, there should be password security uh, in terms of uh, best practices around uh, long passwords, complex passwords, uh, best habits around uh, web browsing, making sure that you are clearing of your cookies, for example, or all of those things. Uh, being aware of social engineering, the fact that uh, you might be reached out by malicious actors who are posing at your uh, near and dear or that people you uh, do business with. Uh, malware, of course, the basic concepts. Uh, then also about uh, mobile security, uh, given that we are all using our own uh, personal computing devices, either a tablet or a phone, more and more. So, what are the things we do to secure it? Uh, physical security, uh, for example, tailgating is something that comes in here. So. Uh, many times we let uh, friends uh, come behind us or if someone behind us we walk to uh, uh, access uh, 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 and we walk to an access door and let people just sort of pay it through it so that's a physical security, security issue we should be aware of uh, removal uh, removal media and uh, okay. so all of this uh, if you look at this this is more about the awareness part of it and again i think the interesting thing that we should be aware of that we should all uh, Keep in mind is that there's a part about awareness and there's a part around education also. So education is where you start going into, okay, so I need to do my job. I'm a programmer, so I need to know C++, I need to know Python. If I am a, a security operation person, then I need to know how do I operate an SIA. So all that is more on the uh, education and learning side. Uh, but the awareness is actually something that's even more basic. Awareness is uh, for the organization. Regardless of whether you are in uh, IT, whether you are in finance, if you are in HR, uh, you might be even you might uh, even be a, a physical security worker. You might be a, a gatekeeper. So you need to be aware of certain very very basic things. So education and learning comes uh, later, and that is a function of your uh, role, your responsibility. If you are in finance, then you need to do finance certification. If you are in uh, if you are in programming, then you need to do programming certification. So. Education learning is different, but regardless of whatever you're doing around education and learning, you need to be aware of what are some core hygiene uh, factors uh, within the organization that need to be followed. And that is where if you talk about NISD, Internet 50, if you talk about security awareness, security simulation, all of that comes into the basic hygiene level, which is uh, more around the uh, very basic awareness uh, part. Uh, so again, uh, why are we doing it again? Uh, so to uh, going back to our old friend, Mr. Uh, pointy haired Boss. So we want to make sure that uh, Mr. pointy haired Boss understands that hey, it's not okie dokie to click on uh, some random mail and enter your bank account uh, number. So what you want to try and do is that through your basic awareness, you are going to everyone in your organization and then you are trying to reduce, uh, you can't always eliminate of course, but you are trying to reduce the impact of some of these attack vectors, essentially. So, uh, and how do you do that? Uh, so, there are many ways you can do that. So, security awareness again, there are many elements of it. There are live action videos, and some of these I'll also be showing. So, live action videos, animation, uh, you, you might have compliance modules, uh, you might have micro learning. So, there are many different ways to do it. But uh, essentially, the bottom line is that you want to get through to Mr. Pointy Head Boss uh, that some things are good, some things are bad. And uh, in terms of how you deliver that, uh, yeah, there are many different ways. So uh, with that, I will sort of pause again for a, a second uh, quick poll also. So uh, I think the first poll we spoke about was whether uh, training programs in your organization, uh, the awareness training program. Uh, so the question is, would you be aware whether uh, these nine elements that we looked at, social media, uh, uh, malware, phishing, physical security, those elements, are they covered in your existing uh, program or not. So, so maybe we'll take a quick 30 minutes to go through that and also look to see if you have any uh, uh, questions also. Uh, okay.
okay, what is the risk? Uh, do these regulations guidelines describe what content should be covered and how push information should be done? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, I think that's a good question. So while we are waiting for the poll to complete, so all these uh, regulations and guidelines that I shared earlier, they are not prescriptive in nature. Uh, they typically just say that hey, you need to have a security awareness training in program uh, at, at least once a year. So that is broadly what they say. Now, how do you implement this? Is something that is not uh, really uh, specifically said. It doesn't say these are the modules you should have. Uh, this is how much uh, training should be done in a month. This is the quantum of training. Uh, typically, they'll say that you should have some kind of an assessment also. Right? So, if they, if they you have to have some training, you have to have some assessment, but they will not give any guideline around the, the structure of it, how many modules, what kind of assessment, what is the passing that is left to your implementation uh, uh, preference. So, so yeah, uh, I hope that answered your question if you were about what you were uh, looking for. Uh, there's also a question from Prema uh, about how do we accommodate our existing training content, which might include unique material. Uh, that is a great question, Prima. So typically what would happen is that uh, uh, we will normally have a standard set of training uh, uh, content around security awareness. So if you talk about phishing awareness, malware, uh, physical uh, security, for example, all that is standard material, and then that can be a standardized training that applies to most organizations. Uh, at the same time, uh, whenever you have any custom information, or if you have, say, an acceptable use policy, and you want that to be part of the uh, part of the training you of your uh, team, and you want to make them read through it and take a test on what is acceptable use policy, for example, for our organization, we should be we should be able to include that in our uh, training program uh, by creating a custom module and that should be again part of uh, the training plan. So as I said earlier, the compliance and regulation, they don't, they don't, they don't say there's a right or a wrong way to do anything. So here it's very important that for uh, our organization, we are clear about what we are doing, why we are doing, and if there's a need to customize it, we should definitely include those custom content. Uh, 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 Siju also has a uh, question. Uh, to what extent can we reduce attacks to QA by negligence of users? So we have uh, antivirus uh, installed. So that's a good question, Sidhu. Uh, thank you for raising that. Uh, so uh, to reduce attacks to email by negligence, uh, uh, to me, I think that is a behavior change. If you talk about, for example, a manufacturing firm where the users are not very tech savvy, if they don't have any training, even if, even if you have antivirus installed, like I said earlier, there's always going to be some phishing email that comes through. Now, if I am a manufacturing floor worker, I am not very sophisticated. If I get an email saying that, hey, you have won uh, $1 million, click here to um, click here and enter your bank details, right? If there's a high probability that if I am a non tech savvy worker, I am going to keep on that. So, so they, the mail will get through, you can't avoid that. And it's very likely that the behavior will be that, that uh, shop store worker is going to click on that email. On the other hand, if you want to change the behavior, what you should do is you should have this training program where, uh, where even your shop store workers have to go to this mandatory training that says, okay, this is what phishing is. So that the next time that uh, uh, he sees a phishing email, he realizes that, okay, I need to look at it, I need to understand whether this should be phishing, and maybe I should not click on it. And that is where the phishing simulation also comes in, which I'll talk about next. Which is sort of checking to see if you are if, if the desired behavior is coming or not. So you might give them training. So if you think about it, you might give a shop floor uh, worker some training, but you can't assume that you will not pick on uh, you will not pick on the next email that comes through. Which is why you want to simulate a phishing attack, uh, and then you will uh, what you want to see is, is he actually clicking on clicking on it or not. If he clicks on it, then you get to know that hey, uh, shop floor worker, uh, we gave you training. Why do you click on it? You shouldn't have clicked on it, uh, right? Uh, so in this case, it was okay. I simulated it. But what if there was a real uh, phishing email? So you want to keep doing that uh, enough time, it, it, you'll see a change in the behavior, if that makes sense. So uh, does that answer your question, Sidhu? Uh, what do you read? Okay. Uh, no response from Sidhu. I'm assuming that's okay. Uh, the second poll also uh, has ended and uh, okay, so I think some people are saying that uh, uh, the missed elements are covered to some extent uh, in quite a few cases, 460%. Uh, but 
it's about uh, 40 odd percent where uh, uh, they see the load being program or uh, they don't know. Okay. That is good to hear. Uh, with that, let me just move on to the next section, which talks about yeah the type of teaching attacks. So uh, I'll spend a couple of minutes very quickly uh, talking about the uh, types of phishing attack that might uh, come through. So, so there's a part, uh, for example, the drive-by attack. Right? So these are things which are uh, template built to uh, generate a sense of urgency. It might say that, hey, a limited time uh, giveaway of iPhone 13 Pro, you click on this. So it, it's not, it's fairly generic in nature. Uh, and uh, it's typically some kind of a clickbait where uh, you want, uh, where the uh, malicious, is, uh, malicious actor is trying to uh, ask someone to click on it just because of how urgent uh, that message sounds. Uh, that's uh, opposed to something uh, that's uh, more of a data entry uh, phishing attack. So this is where uh, you might have, and I'll show you some of this during the demo. So this could be, this could range from attack where it's uh, trying to get you to disclose your uh, user ID and password by asking you to enter a uh, username and password in a fake landing page or asking to enter your banking information into some kind of fake banking page and so on. So you could have a data entry session page. Uh, then uh, the one that is becoming more and more common now is a business email uh, compromise. So this is where it's actually more targeted to a large extent. So if for Pozitka as a business, for example, if someone does a bit of research about Pozitka, uh, then we'll be able to find out who are the kind of partners we work with. So we work with Splunk, we work with IBM, we work with uh, uh, Force Point, we work with Nexo. So they might try to sort of spoof emails uh, for Pozitka employees where it's, uh, it's very seen as coming from, say, Splunk or from Nexo, because there's a higher chance then that someone in the might be able to uh, might fall uh, for something like that. So, so this is more research, more thought going into business email compromise, much higher chances of success. Uh, and spear phishing is actually something that's even more pointed. This is where uh, the actor sort of tries to identify someone specific. So uh, they try to find someone who's a, a management person, maybe someone who's a, a CXO, a CFO, a CEO, someone who is uh, likely to be more uh, who's likely to be privy to more sensitive information. So it's a very targeted uh, campaign where you're sort of looking at the big guns in the organization. So spear phishing or even mail phishing uh, is what you might call it. And finally, the malware and malicious attachment. So this is what actually we are seeing in the industry right now, most uh, prevalently. Uh, typically, they, so whatever the, the phishing email is really an entry point to define some kind of payload. Uh, either via the email or through some command and control communication that happens later uh, if someone goes outside their environment to deploy things like ransomware and all. Right? So this is the one where uh, uh, which is this is the one that's more immediately damaging in terms of what happens. So yeah, uh, so based on this, uh, if you look at all these uh, different kind of phishing that happen, now how do we manage user behavior? Uh, so what you will typically do is we'll send out a phishing email to uh, employees and that's the first step. So this is a simulated phishing email. So we'll send out a simulated phishing email after some training awareness. And what uh, we want to do then is we want to track and report uh, basically who clicks on the email that comes through. So ideally you don't want anyone in your organization to click on any of these simulated phishing emails, but there will always be people who, who will end up clicking on it. Right? So you want to be able to track that. And then for those people who click on it, uh, for them you want to have some kind of a solution that's deploying a training model. It may be saying that, hey, you clicked on this, it was a spam email, uh, you shouldn't have done it. Uh, why, why don't you just try to understand a little bit more? So that, so that it's organic, it's part of the process. And then over time, uh, you send more phishing email to see if there's a change in behavior of the team. So over time, uh, you, what you want to see is that there's a drop in the uh, click rate. That happens. So again, I'll show this as part of the demo in, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, the kind of template that you will talk about are uh, many different things. You might have, for example, an eBay shipment notification. Uh, you might have mails uh, coming out from O65, from uh, from from Salesforce. Uh, social networking always a, a very effective way to get into get people to click, click on things. So LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, uh, those kind of things, and so on. So all these techniques are used by malicious actors to try and uh, get a foothold. So 
I guess the uh, last section before I move on to the demo is also about the importance of good practical reporting. So uh, again, I, I like I was saying the fishing simulation part of it also. It's easy, uh, I won't say it's easy, but it's possible to launch uh, fishing simulation uh, attacks. It's possible to do CPT awareness. But end of the day, unless you are able to track the output of it, so how many people are uh, doing learning, how many people are passing and failing the test, how many people are getting fish, it's actually, uh, you, you are not going to get a, a decent return on investment on your uh, entire program. So, so you need to think about the metrics. And again, I'll show some metrics that uh, are part of the demo session also. Uh, but uh, what you would want to think about are two sets of metrics. For the learning metrics, what you would want is uh, typically things like training competition over time. Uh, is it uh, are, is the team consistently competing their training? Uh, you want a view of that by department also. How is the finance team doing? How is the HR team doing? How is the IT team doing? Uh, and so on. And then you, you also want some kind of a training summary and statistics. So how many courses were available? How many hours of training were put in? You want to talk about assessment results. So uh, you want to grade that A, B, C, D, E, F. So between departments, what was the score like? Uh, you want to be able to build out to individual learners. So who's doing well, who's doing not, uh, who's not doing well, and you need to be able to see the details on it. Uh, similarly, on the fishing side as well, uh, you've got uh, fish rate over time, uh, fishing rate by department, uh, fishing summary statistics, and then the details of the fishing activity. So uh, all of this, again, um, I will sort of go through uh, in quite, uh, as part of my uh, uh, demonstration uh, that I'm going to do. But, uh, these are some of the important metrics, for example, that uh, I, I, I thought it would be useful to share. Uh, with that, uh, I think it's uh, time for the uh, demo now. So let me just open up. Okay. I'm assuming that my screen is still visible. So I had already simulated some events earlier. Uh, so for the sake of, uh, so, so I guess in terms of the demo, I wanted to give two views here. Uh, one is about the fishing simulation. So how, uh, what kind of, how can you do fishing simulation? Right? And uh, what, is the, uh, what is the point of actually doing it? Second is from a learner perspective, what is it that they see? Uh, I think that's the second element. And the third element is actually in the reporting. We get, those are the three elements that we talk about. So if you notice here, uh, if you look at my inbox right now, uh, all of these emails, these 15 odd emails that you're seeing, these are all actually simulated fishing emails that I generated. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, so the platform that I'm going to be showing you also uh, is something uh, that I'll talk about in more detail. Uh, but this is all generated from our uh, awareness and uh, fishing simulation platform. At the so if I look at, for example, uh, Microsoft O6, sorry, Microsoft Office 0365, right? So I, I got an email like this, uh, and here on the face of it, it's saying that, hey, um, there's a policy to reset the password, click on it. So if I click on it here, uh, it actually uh, gives me a uh, it gives me a message saying that, hey, uh, you have been fished. In this case, it was fine, uh, but uh, please be careful. You shouldn't do this anymore, right? Because this is a controlled fishing environment. And it, it gives you a bit of uh, learning, it gives you a bit of information around uh, why you should not be doing that. Uh, if I look at something else, if I look at say, uh, something like eBay, so again, it looks fairly realistic here again. So it says uh, this is coming from eBay, uh, and then it talks about okay, this is actually something that you can customize also. So if you're doing it for Singapore, if you're doing it for India, you can have different templates. You might have a flip card template for India, for example, uh, if you want to make it more. Uh, uh, targeted for your audience. And then if I click on it again, there's going to be a phishing education again. So, uh, yeah, uh, order and delivery is very high than our uh, On the other hand, if I go, I also uh, talk, spoke about the data uh, encryption rate. Now, for example, if I talk about Zoho, now Zoho is one of our corporate uh, 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 platform, of course. And I think uh, uh, we also use Zoho. So, if this came to our team, for example, they might actually be thinking it is actually a proper email. So it says that, okay, to activate your Zoho account, please click the link below. If I click on it, this actually takes me to do a page that says, uh, sign into your Zoho CRM account. It's not my way to type in whatever. And say sign in. This actually says that it's a phishing email. Even though, and again, these are, some of these can be really sophisticated, 
it doesn't actually come across as being a phishing email. So in this case, it was something that was a phishing email, not something from. And then uh, what you want is you typically want to have some kind of uh, training uh, uh, that is deployed immediately on the back of that. So I'll just play a couple of seconds of this video uh, so that everyone can listen to it to see you know, one way of how to. Holy cow. What's up? I just got a message from Mr. Matthews. <laughs> Check this out. He wants my opinion on the Westfall contract. But the Westfall contract is finance, not HR. I think you're being fished. Come on, this isn't spam. No, spam is... Yeah. So again, I think that if you're going back to what I had uh, mentioned earlier, so uh, this becomes very effective because what happens is if, uh, if I were a shop store worker, for example, if I'm a manufacturing or automobile manufacturer, a shop store worker, if I got this email, I might very well click on this, but at the same time, I'm basically being told that, hey, you should not have done that, you're being fished. Here's a small thing you module for you, right? So, uh, so again, uh, uh, here are some examples of how you might get phishing simulation email, uh, where uh, you are able to test the performance of your team of your organization employees uh, before you go anywhere. Uh, the second part of it, uh, like I mentioned, was okay. What does the employee see now? So, for example, I am Samson and I have access to both uh, coursework and I also have a view to phishing. So here, that it says, for example. Uh, what is what has been my behavior? I got so many emails uh, from my uh, phishing platform. Uh, it talked about the attack type, and then uh, some cases I did not open it, which is a good thing. But in many cases, I actually opened it. So here I am actually sort of as an employee, I am able to keep track of when was I uh, uh, phished, uh, did I open it or not open it, and this gives me a very nice view uh, as to uh, what the phishing rate and uh, report it has been. And again. This will roll up for all employees uh, to the org level also, so that you will see the same view when I get into reporting uh, uh, around what the administrator will see in terms of uh, the overall reports. So, so that one part. Uh, the second part is again the coursework itself. So, like I said, so one part is fishing. Fishing is complement. Uh, fishing simulation is complemented by the coursework itself. Yeah, so the coursework is complemented uh, uh, by the fishing simulation. Now, this is how you would actually have some kind of a training and uh, course. So uh, you might have multiple courses. So he, it's an annual uh, CPT or this training. <coughs> you might have something like this. So fishing in brief, uh, spear fishing, fast security brief, malware brief. So if you go in again, uh, you have to make sure that your team goes in and completes their uh, training also. This security awareness training covers phishing, or how hackers fish for victims. It is often easier to track <coughs> people who already have access to a computer than it is to hack into the computer. So again, so that the training part of it, and then once you go back, you'll also want to build in certain assessment. So you might go in and say that, okay, uh, these are some of the assessments that you need to. For example, if I talk about uh, uh, acceptable use assessment, I sort of click on it. Uh, AUP uh, lays out rules and standards of behavior for computer network security. Uh, yeah, I say true, and uh, it's saying, yeah, that's correct. If I say something wrong, uh, yeah, it's saying, yeah, that's wrong. So again, there's a part about uh, assessment, either predefined or if you have your own custom training modules, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So it needs to be able to cater to that. So from a learner perspective, uh, if you've got uh, uh, 100 employees, 1,000 employees, 10,000 employees. This is the kind of view that they should have around awareness uh, training and fishing simulation. Okay, these are the awareness modules I need to complete, and this is how I'm doing the completion. And finally, if I come back to uh, the organization itself, yeah. uh, what do I see as an administrator? If I am reporting on this, if I am the uh, administrator of this training program, if I am the administrator of this, uh, 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 fishing simulation and training a, a, a security awareness program, and what do I see? So, in that case, uh, what I can do is yeah. so I just load some sample reports and take a couple of seconds. Yeah, so what I want to have is I want some kind of a dashboard that gives me a view about all of these different things. 
So, for example, one view that I want to have is I want to have a program also across fishing and activity uh, area. Then I want to see how is my fishing uh, performance for the team. And then I want to see what is the awareness uh, education part. Right? So, uh, if I look at, for example, the program overview, what I want to see is that, okay, uh, this is my fishing rate. So, fishing rate, uh, it, it used to be high 30%, but then it dipped for some time and then it got up again. If I look at my, uh, uh, oh, sorry, this is the completion rate. If I look at the fishing rate, the fishing rate was low, then it spiked, and then it's gone up. If I want to look at fishing rate by department, uh, so again, uh, high is bad, 100% is bad, that means 100% of the fish. So if I want to do it by department, management, sales, operations, any kind of department investigation I want to do, or any other slicing and dicing, I want to see low numbers here. If I look at awareness and education on the other hand, I want to see high numbers. 100% is good, let's see 100% is bad. Uh, if I look at the fishing performance in particular, so 30 day fish rate, one year fish rate, uh, how many people are reporting about fishing. Then uh, if you want to see a trend line, if you want to see what kind of templates are actually effective around fishing, uh, all that is uh, captured here. If you want to do awareness training, uh, then you want to you want metrics around that also. So again, uh, uh, the training completion rate, the learner type, uh, training completion over time. If you want to see how they are doing in the assessment, so different kind of assessment, what is the score, and then you want to go into the details, uh, grading, and all of this can be customized again, but uh, this is illustrative to some extent about how you can think about this. So, so I think this was just a brief uh, uh, demonstration of the platform that we use for our own uh, uh, environment, for our own organization, for our customer. And uh, I guess just to close it out, I think we're almost at the end of the session. Uh, session. Uh, uh, I guess that uh, I guess that the webinar recording the material will be shared with you after the session. So please feel free to uh, go through it. Uh, I wanted to share also that whatever I uh, demonstrated now, the awareness training, the the fishing campaign, uh, we do have a, a program going on right now where uh, if you want to try it out for your organization, you want to launch some uh, training modules, you want to launch some fishing simulation campaign. Uh, just as a trial, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, our team will be happy to uh, assist with that. Uh, and if you have any other queries or if you want to do the trial, of course, please feel free to uh, reach out to us. The email ID you should contact is susan at posita.com. So, so, with that, I'll, I'll pause. I think we are at the end of the session. In case anyone has any final questions, uh, I would be happy to answer those. Uh, if not, uh, please do uh, feel free to uh, continue with what we is doing. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining today's session, uh, taking some time out of your busy day, uh, especially on a Friday. Uh, I hope you, you found this session informational and uh, look forward to connecting with you again on the next one. So I'll stay on for a minute or two uh, in case anyone has any questions, but yeah, I think uh, uh, we are at the end of the session today. Uh, uh, Dennis, uh, anything from, from school? Uh, no, Sam. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time, Sam. Thanks for the session. Wonderful session. So, uh, people have a happy weekend and uh, be safe. Thank you. Thank you, guys.